Hey, a pleasant good day everyone, this is Sports Fan News, I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a quick preview to the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens series, been having some issues with electricity now that that's back, our Wi-Fi's been a little iffy here, so good to go through this one a bit quicker than some of the other videos, but I hope you all enjoy the other series previews, I'm going to link the playlist in the end screen, please go back and check them out if you didn't check out some of the previous series previews, as this will be the final series preview of the first round of our NHL playoffs, as it's going to be between the Maple Leafs and Canadians, let's get right into it, Toronto's coming in hot at 7-1-2, and they've been a brilliant team at 18-7-3 against their own division, obviously as everyone's playing in their divisions, at home, and then 17-7-4 and on the road, where Montreal has been not so good on the road, where obviously they're going to start in Toronto, they're 11-10-7, and where they really saved the road record by that uh, overtime point, and then 13-11-4 and at home, they're also one of the teams with a minus goal differential coming into the playoffs, one of only two teams, as they have the big minus goal differential at minus nine, as the other team is St. Louis, who only has a minus one so I think this team is coming in a little bit outmatched here. This was not a very great, consistent season for the Canadians. I feel like they kind of were just the team that got in by default in the Canadian division in the four spot because Calgary really just had a very struggling season. Ottawa obviously is not fully there yet, and then Vancouver just fell off a complete cliff this year. They were an impressive team, a surprise team last year, and then just reverted absolutely down a downturn this year. So I feel like they kind of just worked their way in there. They were a surprise team of last year's uh, play into the playoffs, really playing the Flyers really well. But this year, it just doesn't seem like they have that same energy and that same spunk on their team that they had last year, where Toronto does. Toronto took a playbook out of Tampa Bay, the other T-team's playbook, which was they realized they can't get to where they want to get to in the playoffs. They can get to the playoffs, but not get to where they want to get to or get anywhere until they add some more jam and just kind of thoroughness on their team and their players, and they have that. They added, of course, Zach Bogosian to their defense, who's a great playoff guy to have. He had a good season all in all, too, but a good player defensive dad that adds some brute force to your defense at 6'3", 226, really helps you out for the playoffs. They had Justin Hall, they, obviously, who's a very good guy to have. They have size and Muzzin, 6'3", Hall, 6'4", uh, Bogosian, 6'3". And then even Brody and Riley are both bigger guys, especially, well, not Brody, but he's 6'1", but only 185, but Riley's a bigger guy at 219. So they got a lot of size via their defense, but what they needed to add to was obviously some size to their forward core, and they brought in Joe Thornton, of course, and then during the season, they bring in Nick Foligno, who's one of the better defensive players in all of hockey and really one of the better playoff performers also because he just adds a lot of jam adds that spunk adds that physicality that type of player you really want in the playoff and then they have size obviously in him and joe thornton as veterans jason spetzer you brought in wayne simmons all these guys are those guys you want to have that add that physical spunk to your team that's really much more needed in the playoffs. The guys that can just run right through people, really agitate the other team. They have that now. That's exactly what Tampa Bay did to add to their team to be able to get from point A to point B. Now, I'm not saying Toronto's going to win the Stanley Cup. They're a team that normally disappoints, unfortunately, in the playoffs. But for this series, I don't think they're going to do that at all. I think they're in a very good realm coming in. I mean, they have... Um, one of the better, their, their top six offense in terms of their goal output, where uh, the Canadians are ranked all the way at 17th. Um, they're a top seven defense in terms of their goals allowed, where the Canadians are ranked all the way down at 18th. So I just think that the that the Canadians are really outmatched in this series. Carey Price is the only caveat that could save them, but Carey Price just recently struggled. He's been injured and banged up this year in his comeback start rehabbing in the minors, allowing two goals. So I'm not just so keen on him being able to step up. Playoff Price is different. But he just doesn't seem like he's fully there just because of health, unfortunately, this year being banged up. So I don't think that's going to fully happen. That's what will probably give them one game. And that's why I'm going to take the Toronto Maple Leafs in five instead of sweeping the Canadians because Carey Price likely is to find that one spark of glory in one game, but I don't see him stepping up and being the full-blown playoff Price because he's been banged up this year. He struggled in his rehab start. Just doesn't seem like it's lining up for that. Toronto did everything they had to do in the offseason, adding the Wayne Simmons of the world, adding the Joe Thorns of the world, having Jason Spezza on their team. 
even guys like uh, Riley Nash uh, are good playoff performers. You know, Mikhaev, um even has size, um, isn't as uh, big in terms of weight, 195, but has size at 6'3". And then you got Pierre Engvall, who played over uh, 40 games for you. That's a youngster that adds that jam to your team at 6'5", 214. So I think they have a lot of good guys. They added skill where Golchenyuk actually produced, I think it was like 12 points or something like that in his handful of games with them. So he actually looked adequate there. So I think the Maple Leafs really did what they had to do in season and in the off season to add to their team. And it really showed throughout this season, putting them in first place in that Canadian division and it's going to take them over the hump in the series due to the nice moves that were made in the offseason so you got to definitely give a kudos there to Kyle Dubas who gets a lot of flack at times actually seems to have aligned this team really well adding a lot of jam to their team taking the playbook out of Tampa Bay yet again to be able to win this series in five games over those Montreal Canadiens hope you all enjoyed the first round NHL series previews stay tuned for the series reactions that I will have after each series recap and of course the series previews to the second round of the series uh, of the playoffs excuse me as that comes forth as well i hope you all enjoyed these videos of great and plenty day and as always enjoyed the great hockey and stanley cup playoffs it's the most wonderful time of the year there's been great playoff action this far again toronto maple leafs in five this has been sports for that news i'm joe borick stay safe and peace out everybody